Hi, Mike Gibson, Roxana Marin, coming to you live from Sky 2015 here in San Diego. First, Roxana, before we get into your late-breaking trial, congratulations on uh, the meeting. Such energy, such uh, participation. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, you it's not really a one-person job. It's an incredible team effort. Michael Jaff, Bob Applegate, and the entire uh, Sky staff and uh, uh, leadership have been extremely supportive and I, I'm really excited about Sky. I mean this mm. is a um, you know two months after ACC we thought nobody would come. It's packed. The, uh, the whole meeting is filled with case presentations. We're asking all of our clinicians that instead of lecturing to using slides with uh, you know uh, Kaplan-Meier curves teach that with your cases right so that when people go home they can say oh you know what you just showed a case just like that and this is how Mike Gibson treated the patient right. so I think it's 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 a good thing case-based learning is just such a good way to it really is. drive home those lessons it really right? is it really is and we still keep it extremely academic and mm -hmm. and uh, of course when it's anecdotal and someone says well I do it this way well you know there'll be somebody on a panel who will correct them and all of this so yeah. it's it's really exciting I'm really yeah. excited about Oh. Well, great work. So let's talk a little bit about your late-breaking trial. We usually look at PKPD in patients who are healthy volunteers, but then when you go to the real world and say a STEMI patient, all these drugs have delayed absorption and, and all the usual lessons that you learn in PKPD studies don't hold. But you've kind of circled back now to the ACS patients who don't have impaired absorption necessarily, who are troponin positive, they're ACS, and you compared ticagrelor and clopidogrel in that ad hoc situation. And what did you find? So a really great, um, I mean, I, I got very excited about this study because as you know, the Triton study did do ad hoc PCI where they loaded the patients right on the table. Right. Whereas in Plato, it was at first point of contact, sure. and there was always this lingering question, is ticagrelor going to work on the table? Right. Uh, and uh, is it going to have some issues if, it, right. if it's not done? And then so we, um, we had 100 patients. It's a really small study, but really meticulous study with a, with a lot of excellent sites who did this meticulous work at baseline half an hour, two hours, at the end of PCI, whichever came first, and then, you know, again, just eight hours, and then just before discharge. Multiple um, uh, PRUs mm -hmm, on these patients mm -hmm. after administration for the first time in naive patients, mm -hmm. clopidogrel versus um, ticagrelor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These were troponin negative ACS patients. So oh, they were, these were yes, unstable they were angina. Unstable angina, okay. troponin negative, because what we wanted to do, we didn't want to have it be muddied by some troponin elevation that might be higher in one group versus right. the other. We really right. wanted a homogeneous population. Right. So what we found, um, uh, the primary endpoint was the PRU at, at two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it was si significant. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was... Um, Significantly better for ticagrelor. Significantly better yeah. for ticagrelor. Mm -hmm. um, but serendipitously, because we did these multiple measurements, by half an hour, within within 30 minutes, um, platelet inhibition was achieved with ticagrelor. Mm -hmm. And I think that really speaks for the fact that this potent agent works fast um, in ACS patients who are not necessarily, as you said, right. sick. Sick, um, with impaired gut absorption, with impaired hepatic absorption congestion. And all this and, other stuff. Right. Um, but um, this is a, this is good news. So you mm -hmm. could give, uh, you could expect the same kinds of outcomes if they didn't get it, let's say, in the emergency right. department. So um, I think that's a, a it's a reassuring study. Of course, there was no this wasn't um, at all looking at endpoints and things like sure. that. Although we looked at 30-day endpoints, and those are not right. any different. But um, I think it was a very good study for giving yet another um, level of assurance for physicians who aren't preloading right. uh, that they can do it on they the They want table. to define the anatomy first, who yeah, are still I concerned. Mean, yeah. They can do it. Now, this was this regular oral ticagrelor. This wasn't the crushed it version. It was not the crushed version, and which, we just uh, talked a little bit yeah. about the crushed version. That yeah. Apparently um, now it's making its way into the label, the crushed yeah, version. And so if you're achieving that level at 30 minutes, 
you may achieve that level even more rapidly with the crushed version. Yeah, well, we, we don't know that. That will be interesting. But what do you think about the crushed version? Do you think that the crushed version will have a better absorption? Just I, on I mean, it sounds as though, I mean, looking at the higher data. Higher surface area. Higher and, surface area, better penetration. You know, sure. the, in the data that I'm going to show tomorrow night in the symposium um, actually does show much higher levels mm -hmm. or much more rapid in achievement of inhibition with mm -hmm. the crushed version. Wow. So um, it's being used a fair amount uh, in Europe. And so, you know, that really begins to bring into question, you know, some of the parenteral agents. So mm -hmm. if you have this very rapid acting crushed version, mm -hmm. where does that put some of the 2B3 inhibitors and cangalore and everything, oh, you yeah, know? It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very to interesting. To kind of think about that. So the comparator in the future might be the crushed crushed ticagular versus parenteral versions of these molecules. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, in the people who don't have gut edema mm -hmm. and impaired peristalsis. Of course, and, of course because that's going to um, always be a case. Also. Yes. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. And uh, on both the meeting and your late-breaking mm -hmm. trial. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining us here today, Roxana. And thanks to all of you for joining us here live from Sky 2015.